That's the trouble with you council people. If you don't pay the rent for a year or two, you get nasty. I've told you before, you get no money off me until you do something about these premises. Well, what do you mean? Well, I told you about the dry rot. Well, I've got woodworm. <laughs> what do you mean, I do I know? They're eating their way through the rafters. <laughs> you want to see the state of the joists? <laughs> Are you listening to me? Can you hear what I'm Welcome back to a new series of Says Les. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. What you're about to see is a sort of suspense show. In other words, all the time this show is on the air, you'll be wondering what's on the other side. <laughs> <laughs> but we do have a su superb spectacle for you. We have Sid Lawrence and his Knackers Yard Band. <laughs> <laughs> well, the only musicians I know that are mentioned in the Doomsday Book. <laughs> They'll be playing the sort of tunes that kill variety. Actually, they've done very well, the band. They've just come back from a tour of Japanese working men's clubs. <laughs> the only trouble was, with the language difficulty, they thought Sid Lawrence was an impressionist. Because <laughs> after every concert, they used to say, Now you do Harry Curry. <laughs> of course, they were very popular in Switzerland. They were named after the mountain flower, the idle swans. <laughs> we have dancing girls whose average figures are 36, 25, 36, and that's only the feet. You'll be seeing some very great guest stars, such as Florence Mole, the classical strip who does it in a bucket of ferrets. <laughs> <laughs> also on the show, we'll be having Roscoe Chip, the American dwarf who blows omelets through his wife fronts. <laughs> <laughs> and our girl first guest tonight should have been Malcolm Rice, the Runcorn memory man, but he forgot to come. <laughs> 3,000 years ago in the Manchu dynasty, the Great Wall of China was built by peasant labour using their bare hands. Yet yeah, that wall still stands to this day. The pyramids of Egypt were built by the slaves of Israel using the Fulcum principle and pure physical labour. Yet they still shadow the Egyptian desert with their magnificence. A fortnight ago, a team of craftsmen using modern techniques built me a garage next to the house. <laughs> Last Friday, it fell down. <laughs> but of course, accidents can happen. Uh, one of the businesses I wouldn't personally like to be in, of course, is a china shop, where everything is very fragile, with the porcelain and so forth. And if you get the wrong people in, well, of course, the results can be catastrophic. Everything is beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> Everything is beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Bonner. Speaking, Ducky, that's me. <laughs> I believe you've got one or two odd jobs you want doing. Oh, good. My friend and I have just taken over this shop and our grand opening is tomorrow. We needed a couple of uh, strong men to give us a hand. <laughs> oh, well, uh, they don't come any stronger, Mr. Bonner. <laughs> don't they, Whittaker? Oh, no, they don't come any stronger. <laughs> I'm sure they don't. Well, as you can see, I was just putting these plates up on that there display stand there. So, if you'd like to carry on and finish them off while I get on with the unpacking. Thank you, sweetie. <laughs> well, listen, Whitaker, whatever you do, don't get separated. Well, let's go, 
Careful with your kit. Careful now. Slowly do it, lad. That's it. Bring it up. Come on. Down at your end, I've got all the weight. That's it. Keep your thumbs in front. That's it. You're spotting the thumbs. It doesn't help on this side. Right. Slowly. Slowly with your kit. That's it. That's it. That's it, good lad. Turn again with this one. Take your time now. That's it. Don't get flustered. That's it. Keep it horizontal, you see, don't see. That's it. Thumb slap in Now, wait a minute. Wait a minute. <laughs> you should have to wear the different than this, Ducky. You mustn't take one plate between two. You must take one each. And for heaven's sake, dust them before you put them up. Here, there's a bit of a rag. You can use this. <laughs> <laughs> It's not for anything. It's a thing of beauty. A thing that will last forever. Looks like a Mancunian urn to me. What's a Mancunian urn? About 30 quid a week. <laughs> oh, 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 Go! Break the damn thing! Get it! Oh. <laughs> You've been a victim of a fraud, Mr Bowman. This will never last forever. Here I am, Petal. <laughs> Customers, no from the Labour Exchange. Who? Oh, the IRMs. Well, don't just stand there looking beautiful. Get on with it. I think we've been surrounded, Whittaker. But I'll tell you something, I don't like the look of yours. Have <laughs> one of your turns? No, it's, it's just a little accident. It's, it's left me a bit upset. You're at that funny age, Chuck. <laughs> Good God, where did those plates come from? Stratton designed them, especially for me. Stratton? Why? Why? I'll tell you why. The dead naff, that's why. I will not have them in display on my boutique. Our boutique? Just remember this shop is as much mine as it is yours, Charles Bickerstaff. And you're only saying that they're naff because you don't like Stratton. Just because he happens to be a personal friend of mine. So, it all comes out in the open, doesn't it? They are not being put on display in this boutique. Take them down. Take them down! Don't let's fight. Not in front of the hired help. It's because of Stratton, isn't it? I mean, you do like the place, really. Well, I suppose so. But you know what that name Stratton does to me. No, the place in love with. Put them back up again. <laughs> Put them back up again. After all, Stratton is one of the best pop designers in Staffordshire, isn't he, John? <laughs> oh, all right, all right, Charles. All right, if it's going to upset you, I won't have them. I won't have the place. I'll send them back. Take them down. <laughs> Get them down. <laughs> I know Stratton's a wonderful designer, is. It's just that I can't stand that camp voice of hers when she comes trolling in here trying to make a tate over a bit. No, the plates are lovely, they can stay. Put them back up again. <laughs> they can stay. Thank you, Charles, that's very sweet of you. But before you make a, a final decision on this, the... No, it's all right, they can stay. No, it's just that I have a confession to make. Oh. Because I'm, I'm afraid I've been rather foolish. I've invited Stratton for tea today. Stratton! <laughs> <He's> <laughs> Oh, come on, Whittaker. <laughs> That's enough for today. <laughs> Same time tomorrow, sir. <laughs> <laughs>
a hated melody. He had a yell with symphony. He longed to play the drum when his mother made him practice on the fiddle every day. He'd stop right in the middle and he'd say, Oh, mama, I want to make rhythm. Don't want to make music. I want to go ya di ya di ya di ya di ya da da di 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 Sullivan. One of those occasions, now believe you me 
terrible experience the other night, because where I live, it's not a very nice area. In fact, there's so many fiddles at the bingo hall, Mantivani calls out the numbers. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's, a, it's a fairly tough district. In fact, one little lad across the road the other night shot his parents so he could go on an orphan's picnic. <laughs> It's a fact, the last policeman seen around our way was Sergeant Cook. <laughs> On top of all this, I said to the wife, I said, now, the youngest one is going for violin lessons. I said to the wife, now, you must tell him, impress upon him. He knows what the neighbours are like, he must never play that violin in the street. But he wouldn't listen. So he came in last week, the violin was wrapped around his neck. <laughs> the wife sat in the corner of the kitchen and she burst into tears. She said, what a rotten thing for anybody to do. This lad of mine said, that's nothing, I wait till you see where they've shoved the bow. <laughs> I had a look, I said to the wife, thank God I wasn't learning the trombone. <laughs> well, I was blazing. I said, who's done this? You show me. Well, I'm not frightened, I used to be a boxer. <laughs> I wasn't very good, in fact, I was carried out the ring so often, I had handles on my shorts. <laughs> It's a box like Cooper, not Henry Gladys. <laughs> I was on the canvas so often I became known as battling Rembrandt. <laughs> Never forget my last fight. I recognised a face on the fourth row at the back. It was ah. mine. <laughs> I said, you show me who's done this, son. He took me across the road and I marched up this fella's path and I banged on the door. The door opened, there was a fella stood there. It wasn't his size it would have been, but he was cracking walnuts with his eyelids. <laughs> <laughs> the shirt was wide open. I've never seen such a hairy chest. It looked like a burst sofa. <laughs> <laughs> so I waved the violin in his nose. And he ate it. <laughs> I said, you're a big man where children are concerned. I said, well, I'm his father. Clout him while I'm here. <laughs> and he did. <laughs> so I scraped him off the wash house. I said, hit him again if you've got the guts. And he did. I said, you better come home, son. I think you've had enough. <laughs> One said that music hath charm to soothe the savage beast. Well, meet the man now whose band once sent a hamster raving mad. <laughs> <laughs> it is, of course, Sid Lawrence and his exciting sound of 1791. <laughs> <laughs> the common market's answer to earplugs. <laughs> and <laughs> here they are attempting to be in the mood.
stars Kenneth Connor, The Skylarks and The Bachelor. the rent because I've got brickworm. The place is eaten alive with it. What do you mean you've never heard of it? You've heard of woodworm, well I've got brickworm. Well you're gonna know rent and that's that. <laughs> 